database checkpoint. So in this folder, there is a flight 32 database is there. Right? So in this database, the tables are different. Actually, there are two tables will be there. Right? One is flight table and one is order table. Right? Okay. See here. Insert checkpoint. Database checkpoint. Okay. Even though it is not recording, we can go for the database checkpoints. Okay. 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 So uh, now here I am just going for the first option. Right? So where it is going to create the query by itself. Right? Mm -hmm. Create query using Microsoft Query. Just click on next. So here it's saying that which is required, create new query operation is not available, please modify your permission. Because maybe right to create a query it's in this particular virtual machine, Microsoft Office is not installed. It is MS Access. Right? Oh, okay. It's not there. So that's the reason I'm going for the second option only, where I can specify the query manually. Okay. Yeah. Now, as I said that first we need to create a connection. You can create. Okay. Machine data source. Resource video and resource by 32. Okay. We are making a database connection. Right. Then we're going for and I didn't know select the select. Table name. So table one of the table name is orders. Who is that? Do you remember the orders? One of the table name is orders. Yeah. So orders or the orders is the table which contains the details of the book or flight tickets. Okay. Right? What are the yeah. flight tickets or books? All the details will be stored in the orders table. Okay. I am getting that table information, table data. Right? here. Right? So okay. this is the tables data, or a table data. Right? Yeah. Okay, right now this is what the expected data that should be displayed in the database. Okay. Right? Okay. See, just click on it. Okay, it is going to create data available. So, so database checkpoints are going to use to validate the data in the database. Okay. Right? Okay, whether the data is any uh, data present in the database tables or not, or if any mismatches are happen, right? Okay. So when the mismatches will happen, whenever any any crashes will be there for the database, right? Okay, whenever the data is moving from one database to other database, right? Okay. So at the time there may be some mismatches happens, right? So what they do is before going to move the database. Right, what they do is they are going to put a backup of the database from there. Okay. Right? Okay. Then after that they'll move. Right? So at that time if they want to compare whether the database is data they move correctly or not. So whatever okay. the database that they have taken backup in the database, they are going to create a statement database response and that data will be compared with the data which is moved. Right? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here that all cannot be do performed here. So what I am doing is I have created a database checkpoints with the data existing in the database orders table. Right? Okay. Now okay. I am manually going to light application. Okay. Thank you. 
So here it is, yeah, I'm just opening it in any data. Okay. I'm opening the data of eight. I'm just modifying the number of tickets. Okay. Manually I'm doing it. If there is some change, okay. it will automatically, right? Okay. I'm just changing. But you have put a checkpoint to the earlier database which had the value 2. Value 2, right? At the time. Yeah. Before. Yeah. before that modeling. was our expected value, yeah. That's our expected value. So here we are doing it manually. Actually this okay. should be happened by default in the real time scenario. And yeah. they are moving there in the mismatch. If any mismatch, then it will has to get in. So this yeah. will compare the data of data that present in the checkpoint with the data that is actually present in the database now. Okay. Right? You okay. compare the board and click on the run button. So the departure time also is not correct. Right? See here. The login agent name. Right? Okay. Because agent name I have logged in with a different name. Right? Yes. Some, yes. Something. Yes. Agent name is somebody has changed this. Right? Okay. So on this one. Right? If I double click on it, it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is the expected and this is the actual. If we double click on this one, time, it is not having the time right now, and test. No, the above one. Yeah. These are just compared, but manually it's not check the data in the database itself. Yeah, you have so much data. So much yeah. data. So it is going to validate the data, compare the data on the actual display in the database in a fractional size. Right? Okay. Mm. So this is about the database. Yeah. Okay. And we have the cost structure collection in the database. Mm. Now we are going for the XML checkpoints. Okay. So what is this XML first of all? Mm. Okay. We have an idea about XML. I mean, HTML. Yeah, that uh, for the hypertext uh, markup language. Right? Yeah, I know that. It's, yeah. It's an just used to do come some coding just like as the Java something like that. Right? Yeah, script, Generally, yeah, scripting. HTML will be or XML will be used. HTML, particularly not XML. HTML will be used to define, design the front end page. Uh, the page objects. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. The but, yeah. Uh, but XML is the one where it will use to transfer the data from one location to another location in the application. Mainly. Mm -hmm. So okay. in terms of, suppose the example is uh, you are making a payment through online using debit card or a credit card. Right? Okay. So okay. in your front end page you are going to enter your details, your credit card number, your C number, your expiry date, everything. And okay. then click on that new order. It will give you the message that card is accepted or card is not accepted, invalid card. Okay. Well, okay. some response. So how it is okay. giving your response. So what are the details you are given in the front end? So we have got this. This front end page will send it to one XML. Right? Okay. So okay. it will create one XML with all your details. And that XML will be sending it to the authentication. Right? The which okay. bank credit card it is as well. To that credit, to that bank, it is going to send these details okay. right, to XML. Right? That is what is request XML. We can call it as in development terms. Right? Oh, okay. yeah. So it will send the request XML. So that bank will issue the details in the, from okay. the request XML. And it will validate that if this credit card number, this match is, is matching with there, any of the credit card details having in the database, bank database. Okay. If it is there, then the system the bank system will again send the response back to the so in an in a XML format again. That is response XML we can call it as. Right? Okay. In the response whatever you got that will be displayed in your front end page. So this is what actually happened in the back end. Okay? This is an example. Like that for for few of the transactions, so XML will be used to transfer the data, right? Okay. From one location to other location and get the response like something like that. 
right? So we have to validate the data. Using the XML checkpoints, we can validate the data in the XML files, whether the XML file is sending the proper value or not. What mm -hmm. happens is sometimes, so if we are giving a right credit card number, right details, everything is correct, but still it is saying that invalid credit card. Okay. Right? Sometimes it may happen, right? Because whatever the details you have given in the front end base, that details may not be properly captured by the XML and may not send the proper values to the other end to validate. Yeah. Yeah. At that time what will happen, wrong results will be there. Yeah, it's not right? that uh, value. So, okay. right. To make sure whether the XML file is passing the proper values or not, we are going to validate the data in the XML, check, XML files. Okay. Right? Generally, this XML file should be provided by the developer's own. Right? We should have the request. Yeah. Because we don't have the access of getting the XML file. Uh, right? Okay. So okay. we should have to make a request. So that is the scenario we are having. For this one, can we please send the request XML file as expected? Right? Okay. Expected request XML file. Then send it. And also, actual XML file. So when the actual XML file will be generated, when we are really perform the operation, right? Okay. When we really enter the values, right, and click on that button, then the actual XML file will be generated at the back end. Okay. Right? That, that XML file will be captured by the developer only. So we have to say that to the developer, okay, now I am doing this operation, can you please okay. capture the XML file? They will capture it and they will send it. So the XML file generally will be look like this. Just I will create one sample. This is the XML file generally, right? Okay, okay. okay. This is, assume that this is what our XML file expected. Expected, uh, okay. okay. I am going to save this one in a desktop, right? By selecting this one as alpha because XML file will be record.xml. It should be XML should be with the extension as XML. Okay. Right? So now you can see here, this is XML file. Right? Yeah. Okay. That's the XML file. So when you double click on this one, right, it should have to open properly in the browser. So it is not open properly. Okay. Sorry. Something else is this. Not here, I will not close this one. Oh, that is closing. Okay. Okay, it has opened. Expected XML file. Now, whenever we have an expected XML file, we can create a XML checkpoint here. Go to the user, search checkpoint, XML checkpoint from the sources, browser XML file, which is a desktop. Alright. Okay. Just click on OK. Okay. This should not take this much up. I think my lab, some problem with my laptop. I hope it's so. Yeah, or my internet. Actually it's snowing here. Might be the internet is slow. We have uh, two more checkpoints is there so that I can finish it off. Checkpoints. Checkpoints will take so much time. Almost. Yeah. And little tricky also. Yeah. So here, see here, these are the parameters, values that are passing in the XML file. Right? Name yeah. is one parameter and this is the value. 
right? Yeah. So here, okay, sometimes we no need to validate all the parameter values that are passing in the external column, right? Okay. So there are some mandatory parameters that we have to validate, right? So what okay. are the mandatory parameters that we can check it and remaining we can uncheck like this. Okay, this is going not going to validate. Okay. okay. So okay. as of now, I want to check all the three parameter values. And okay. th these three parameters are name, CC number, expiry date, and these are the values. This is the expected values right now. Okay. Okay. Just click on OK. It's going to create an XML. Now, if I want to run this one, I need to get the actual XML. Assume that we have requested the developer to get the actual XML file. He has sent it. So, when the actual XML file has sent it, so that actual XML file, we have to read, we have to place it in the expected XML file path. Whatever the expected XML file is there, that we have to remove right now. And we have to place the actual XML file in that place. With the same name. Okay. So now I got the credit card so XML file, this one. I am saving in the same path. Right. Now assume that so we have replaced the expected XML file with the actual XML file. Okay. Right? Okay. okay. The same name and the same path. Okay. okay. Now run it. And click on OK. Click on this view XML checkpoint results. These are expected. Alright? And these are actual. These are difference. Okay. okay. So these are going to compare the XML parameter values of expected with the actual XML. Okay. 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 Right? This is how we can validate the values that are passing in the XML file with the XML checkpoints. Okay. Okay. And bitmap checkpoints. Next one is. Okay. So bitmap checkpoints are the checkpoints where that will be used to validate the images of the application. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? Some of the images. So as of now, I can show you with one example. Right? is in the paint application. Paint. Paint is one window based application. <coughs> so in the paint, yeah, I'm expecting this is the image. Right? Okay. okay. So let's create a checkpoint. Checkpoint. So it should be in the recording mode. So the okay. For database and XML, we no need to go okay. for the yeah. right. See here internet is not working, that's why it is not showing in the best application. And up there. Okay. Checkpoint. Bitman checkpoint. And click on that image. Click on OK. So this is the image it has captured right now. Okay. Yeah. Right? So we expect it. So either we can check the entire image or else if I click on the checkbox, it will allow you to select the area of the image that we can we want to validate. So if we do not want to validate the entire image, the area of the image we want to validate, then we can choose the area. Okay. Right now I am going to check the entire image. Just clicking on this. Okay. So. So the checkpoint is already having the expected image that should be displayed in the paint window. Okay. Right? Now and this is somehow modified. Okay. Right. So it is comparing, right? It is taking some time to compare. This is about the XML checkpoint. Sorry, bitmap checkpoints. Uh, okay. bit, bitmap uh, and uh, don't think that I don't know anything. Is bitmap only for standalone thing? It's not like that. Okay. Because in this one, your web-based application is not working right. Okay. Even web-based okay. application is also working. We can see logos, any images. Oh. Okay. Right? We can all check it. Right? Okay. So, okay. why we we'll go for the images? We can manually check it. But, okay. there is a difference between the colors. Some brightness, darkness. Right? Yeah. That we yeah. cannot able to find out. But okay. here, what we'll actually do is, the Bitmap checkpoints will compare the image of expected with the actual image by yes. pixel by pixel. Each and every pixel of expected will be compared with the each and every pixel of actual image. Right? Okay. Okay. So pixel may be different. Right? In that case it will okay. Oh, okay. 
Okay. Because there is image checkpoint also, right? So I was a little confused why there are image and why the bitmap. Here, lucky this. And there is no image checkpoint? This is bitmap. I have selected there is no image. It's named as bitmap. Okay, okay. There is no image here. Oh, okay. Okay, it's a bitmap. Okay. Okay. So we have the last checkpoint is accessibility checkpoint. So accessibility checkpoint in the sense means, so it is the one. So uh, it is going to use to validate the WPTC standards of the application page. So there are some standards where we can call the WPTC standards. The name is as a WPTC. Okay. Right? So whenever the software application is developing, they have to follow these standards. Like, okay. you can see, uh, whenever they are opening a page, whenever they are creating a page, the page should have a title, right? Okay. Every yeah. page should have a title, right? Okay. If it, well, we have discussed about Bing application. When you see Bing, Bing general, right? It is giving the page names. Okay. So that title should be defined, okay. right? Yeah. So for every object, there should be alias name, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Like this, there are some standards will be there. Right? Okay. Whether the standards are followed in this particular application pages or not, to validate that one, so we are going for the accessibility checkpoint. Accessibility okay. checkpoints are only for the web-based applications, because okay. for the web-based applications only the WPC standards are defined. So to know what are these WPC standards, so we can go for tools. Okay. 